So just wanted to share a quick little video of what I think is a good example of how far this is all gone already. Like how far into all this we already are and not what's to come or anything like that. It's um, where we are right now. And it's it's about a church. So, you know, if it's if you're not a Christian, it's not going to concern you. But just think about when they come after your group, whatever that may be. And this should really concern you right now if you're in Canada. Um, cuz it's not going to get any better and just just watch it guys warning censorship warning censorship Ezra Levant here with a very special broadcast today as we speak in fact police are raiding the Grace Life Church just outside Edmonton in Parkland County this is the church that police arrested the pastor and sentenced him to 35 days in a maximum security prison. The footage you're looking at right now was taken moments ago by Sheila Gunn-Reed, our chief reporter. Look at, we got look at the size of the operation going on here. One of the police who opposes this mission, this operation, who actually believes in his oath, who knows that the reason to become a policeman is not to prosecute, charge, harass, imprison, and bully pastors, but rather to go after criminals. I want to let you know that there was one person involved in this raid who tipped us off to it. I think that's an important point that shows that even the police who are shutting down a church know it's wrong. Sheila is on the scene now. We've seen various footage that she's taken and photographs. She's also talked to one of the cops. You can't see it in this shot here, but there are trucks that have brought steel fences. It's a double fence. And they're going to put steel fences And now this. they have uh, three, three layers of fences uh, says they intend to set today. Who knows, tomorrow is four. Occupation and command post at the church because they know that if they were to leave, church members would simply come, move the gates, drill through any fake police lock, and go into the church. The police are occupying a church. I can't believe I'm saying those words. Those are words you would hear from communist China, from Iran, from North Korea, maybe from... I don't know, some other places like Pakistan. But it's happening actually in Alberta, a Canadian province whose motto is strong and free. And bizarrely, a Canadian province whose premier, Jason Kenney, is not only a religious Christian himself, but when he was a federal cabinet minister, set up something called the Office for Religious Freedom, that sought to lecture other countries around the world about religious freedom. Look at the hypocrisy that's going on. That he tweeted here. out over the years that are just so on point. I wish the Jason Kenney of 2014 or 2018 could talk to the Jason Kenney of 2021. Justin, why don't you put up some of those tweets from my feed? Here's one. Can you zoom in? Can you click that one from uh, 2014? Yeah, click that and expand it inspiring Chinese Christians put lives on the line to stop communist apparatchiks from tearing down their church. Jason Kenney was inspired by that. I presume he meant he was inspired by the Chinese Christians, not those tearing down the church. And here's one more tweet from Jason Kenney two years ago. Alberta has long been a refuge for those who fled religious persecution from many parts of the world. They remind us never to take these freedoms for granted. And again, that sounds at the time like it was written like a, like a caution as opposed to 
a warning, a caution not to take them for granted, not a warning that maybe we do take them for granted and who in fact needs to be reminded of that. I can't believe it. As opposed to That's the same guy we have a sending you have this cops, okay, using Albertans taxpayers' money fact, to fund all this. So keep in mind, this guy just uh, was in jail for 35 days, maximum, maximum security jail, um, two, three weeks ago. Site of Grace Life Church, west of Edmonton, Alberta. This is the church where the man beside me, Pastor James Coates, turned himself in to provincial authorities on February 16th to serve 35 days in a maximum security facility for not complying with the public health order on places of worship that would have forced you to turn away 85% of your congregation, force them to distance from each other and to wear masks and not even sing, not even sing. And today at dawn, the church itself behind me here was fenced off. We're standing just off the church property because not only is the church fenced off, but congregants and supporters are not even allowed on the grass here. There's two layers of fencing and a black, I called it a sarcophagus, but really it is. Oh yeah, they are. Put the church they put that the tarp around the on the fence. I, I really um, don't, don't know James, why to impede a uh, vision like that. But. To seeing the church this way, it's very jarring. Well, I think the government is trying to go toe to toe with the Lord of glory in this moment. And the church is not a building. The church is the people of God who come together and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And Amen, so, brother. While it's unfortunate that we don't have access to our facility, that in no way impedes or obstructs the work of the gospel, the building up of the body of Christ. And so I see this as a wonderful opportunity for the Lord to put his glory on display. You, know, you, you told me something similar um, when I spoke to you after you came out of jail. You took the opportunity of jail to minister to the other inmates and for you to see this as an opportunity to, what you're doing now, tell people about the Word of God. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, that, that we can be reconciled to God through his son who went to the cross and died and, and bled and suffered under the wrath of God and, and rose from the grave on the third day. And so what an opportunity Amen, to make brother. that message known. And, uh, and so we are so thankful uh, for that opportunity and the platform that the Lord has given to us. And we want to be faithful in that endeavor. Now, I spoke to your lawyer, James Kitchen. Well, I think what you have is an embarrassed government. The government is embarrassed at this point in time, and the statistics and severity of COVID-19 are coming out so clear that the lockdown measures are not necessary. The people of Alberta are, are coming to realize that that's the case. And that's right. We are uh, a black eye on our government because we continue to meet. We have met for 37 Sundays in a row without a single COVID case, let alone a breakout. And, uh, and so we are exposing the reality that these lockdown measures are not just unjust, they're harmful and unnecessary. And so I think the closing of our facility is necessary in order to prevent any further embarrassment to Alberta Health Services as well as to uh, Jason Kenney. Uh, our administrative gentleman uh, reached out to us and let us know that our building was being locked up. And uh, at that point in time, I had a excitement in my heart. I mean, they are going toe to toe with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And in, in general, that does not go well. It certainly doesn't go well in the end. And, and it, it has the potential to not go very well even now. And so even when that news arrived, um, it was just another development in the saga of this, this stare down between Grace Life Church and AHS. And, uh, and Jesus Christ is Lord and we are going to follow him um, all the way to whatever means necessary so i know it's going to come out to be a long video but i mean this is reality right now you need to wake up and if you think that by continuing to comply to everything that these people are putting onto us onto our lives and and, and everything that they're taking stripping away from us all the freedoms this this all by the way is illegal here it's all against the charter of rights so 
just 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 think about that. And yet here in Alberta, uh, Jason Kenney, our premier, doesn't really seem to want to acknowledge what's happening here. Well, Jason Kenney is an incredible disappointment to this province. And I would say democracy at this point in time is dying because he is not governing in accord with the mind of the people. It is abundantly apparent that Albertans want to go back to life as usual. And the excuse that it's a, a, a health issue that is preventing us from doing that is just that, an excuse. There, there, there clearly is some underlying agenda that is shaping the governance of Jason Kenney and, and it's to the detriment of the people of this province. And, and I would just say to the people of Alberta, the only way you're going to get your province back is if you take it back. It That's is time right. now to not, not in any kind of violent manner, but to peacefully return to your life. I was at Costco on Monday and it was packed. No social distancing. Uh, the only thing that was there was the, the masks. And all that Costco folks need to do is take off the mask. All we need the to muscle. do is go back to life as normal. If everyone goes back to life as normal and the mask comes off, uh, the, 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 the pandemic goes away. The, the, the That's premium right. outlet mall packed on Monday as well. People are not afraid. And so we just need to, to live our lives and do so peacefully and return to life as usual. And this pandemic goes away. We are ultimately in control. But if you are waiting for the government to hand you back your civil liberties, it's just not going to happen. If you're going to say yes to the vaccine, if, you, if you're going to continue believing that this is all going to go away by you going to, to a clinic, to a hospital, sitting down and, and, and putting out your arm, you know, and letting them stick a needle there once, twice, uh, I think it's like four doses now they're talking about, and two weeks now they're saying months uh, in between doses. So nobody really knows. And how long it's going to be effective, nobody really knows. Uh, you are just completely deceived. To return to our normal lives, I think businesses need to consider opening. I think obviously churches and pastors need to open their churches. It's time to go back to life as normal. And at the end of the day, COVID-19 is, uh, is a reality. And, and yeah, you could lose your life to COVID-19. You have to assess whether or not you want to live uh, this life in a, uh, uh, a lockdown type society where your civil liberties are removed from you or whether you're willing to go back to freedom at the risk of the possibility of contracting the virus and losing life and and you know that's where the gospel of christ comes into play because if you are in christ you're not afraid of death you, he conquered the grave and if you would turn from your sin and believe on him you wouldn't have the fear of death and you'd be able to to live your life to the glory of god and 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 even if you should die you would have everlasting life with him in heaven so hallelujah this is a wonderful time to to understand reality as it really is jesus is lord and you confess him as lord believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead and you will be saved it's your opportunity to come to the truth to come to the knowledge to come to 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 the side that's gonna win that's gonna win that's over all of this okay um, it's, it's your free will, it's your choice if you want to continue to live in fear and to wear that muscle on your face and um, to continue to believe the enemy, that's, that's on you. Head of uh, small businesses, do you have a message for the politicians who have somehow asked for Albertans to give them over an entire year of their lives only for us to be right back at the beginning? Yeah, I would just say, come clean. Um, either you are deceived or you are deceiving. There you have an example right there, There's deceived. There's no way that what's happening right now is in accord with truth. There are so many doctors and experts that have come out and challenged the, the science and medicine that is being propagated by AHS and, and our government officials that it is now to the point where you are not responding to the, the information that is available to us, the people. And so either you are deceived or you are deceiving the people and at this point in time it's time to come clean time to wake up for those who are in the government that that understand the world as we see it they need to wake up they need to, to speak out it is time to to return to the, the the civil liberties that are ours in this nation and right now 
our nation and province is being fundamentally altered to the point that I don't think it's ever going to look the same unless we the people, along with the politicians that are, that are on board, step up and rise to the occasion. You know, I'm taking the time uh, on my Facebook page to, to expose this, you know, little by little, because I'm not going to spend my life on this stuff. Uh, I already know what's going on. And, uh, but but it, it ha has come to my attention that some of my friends even um, are just completely delusional, delusional. They're, they're believing just fairy tales, okay? And it's sad. It's sad. It's sickening that you sit there and watch the TV for a year now. It's disgusting. It's disgusting, okay? So brave up say no and maybe we will have a chance to 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 have a normal world again maybe because the damage that has been caused already we might not be able to fix it ever um it's your opportunity to turn to jesus christ to get on the boat Okay, before the flood comes. All right, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's your chance to come to the truth. And it's, it's up to you. It's really up to you. Okay, if you want to stay on the loser team, go ahead. If you want to jump on the winning team, the doors are still open. Praise God.